So which video editor reigns supreme? Is it going to be the free and open source shortcut or is it going to be the paid and proprietary Cyberlink PowerDirector? Well, on today's video, we're going to be looking at the top three features of each of these video editors and then find out which one is the best video editor. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. So let's start off with the one feature that might be the most important to a lot of users out there, and that is price. So starting off with Shotcut, this is a free and open source video editor. So you don't pay a single penny to use this video editor. And if you're not familiar with open source mean, that just means that the code to create this program is available publicly on the internet. So people can look at the code, make changes, updates and improvements that could go into the actual official version of this program. And then another thing with Shotcut is it's multi-platform. So it's available on Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And so obviously, if it comes to price, Shotcut is the clear winner because you're not going to have to pay anything. Now let's go ahead and move over to CyberLink PowerDirector. Now in this case, this is not a free program. So as you can see here, there are a variety of different prices. You could buy the product standalone and pay for the license, or you could do a monthly subscription. And if you already are an existing user, you could also pay for an upgrade. And then other things with Cyberlink PowerDirector is that it is not multi-platform. It's currently only available for Microsoft Windows 10. And then unlike Shotcut, any future updates, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you will have to pay for. So if you bought the previous version of this, like I have PowerDirector 18 Ultimate, I will not be able to get PowerDirector 19 Ultimate unless I pay for the upgrade. So if price is something that is the most important feature or is very important to you, then the clear choice is going to be Shotcut. The next feature we're looking at is one that affects anyone who uses these video editors, and that is usability. Now, in general, if you use a program long enough, you're eventually going to get used to how things work. However, in this comparison, I'm going to be looking at it more from a beginner level or somebody who's brand new to video editing. And so for Shotcut, I would say the overall usability is good. So if you're somebody who's used to using video editors, you would get used to this in 30 minutes or less. But if you're brand new, it might take you more than an hour. Uh, but the overall user interface here, it is intuitive. You know, you can kind of tell what's going on. Uh, you can move around to different tabs. And the overall navigation and usage, I think for most people, even if they're brand new, uh, they could get used to it and understand how things work from a very general level. However, when you dig deeper into Shotcut, that's when you'll notice things that affect the overall usability, especially if you're going to be using this day in and day out. So one thing that I noticed that I think should be a default is, say, for example, you wanted to add a new track, right? I wanted to drag this down here. In most video editors, it automatically adds a track. But in this case, if you wanted to add a track, it doesn't work that way. So if you notice it overwrote uh, something that's already in my current track, and if I wanted to add another track below or above this, I have to right click on my mouse, track operations, and then I have to add the type of track that I want, audio video. So in this case, I want to add a video and then I could go ahead and drag it here. Okay, so that's really a very a long way to do it for something that is very simple overall. And then other things come in whenever you're trying to do, you know, more complex you know, processes, you know, like say, for example, I wanted to add a keyframe, right? So I would select the clip and go to keyframes, but there's nothing here. Well, there's nothing there because you're going to have to add a filter first. So if I go here to filters and then I, let's just say, add this filter right here. Now, if I go to keyframes, I could actually add keyframes. So that's not something that's very intuitive and obvious. And then other things when it comes to usability is, say, for example, I wanted to group a lot of clips together, right? Like I wanted to group this clip and this clip together. And if I right click, there's no way for me to group these clips together. 
okay so that's one thing that will affect the overall usability and even functionality of your video editing process and so that's the overall usability for shotcut i think overall it is good but there's certain things that i think you know very simple processes that should be made easier and then for more detailed processes it's definitely not obvious and there is a learning curve there now when it comes to usability in cyberlink power director Overall, I think you are going to get a better experience here because things are just categorized a lot better and there are a lot of visual cues and just overall the actual video editor itself, it just looks a lot more professional and it's easier to see because the overall style that they use. And then when it comes to the functionality, you know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, like for example, whenever I want to add a track here, so I could add a track here. But if I wanted to add a, another track, you know, like let's just say I wanted to add this one right here, it automatically adds a track for you. Uh, so that's one thing that is available in a lot of video editors, but it's already here and it makes sense uh, versus having to go through the longer processes. And then uh, also another thing, as I showed you an example with Shotcut, if I wanted to do keyframes here, um, it is simpler. So you just go to keyframes, and you can adjust all the different values here. And even though this might look complex, I really feel like when it comes to doing more complex things, it is just easier and more intuitive to do it here uh, within Cyberlink PowerDirector uh, versus doing it in Shotcut. Now, the drawbacks with Cyberlink PowerDirector is just things that annoy me okay uh just a lot of quirks like the biggest thing that i noticed with cyberlink power director is advertising okay so you get advertising for a program that you've already paid for so let me show you some examples like if you logged into cyberlink power director initially you might see some ads and more than likely you will see ads and then another thing is if you're actually in the program itself so if i went here to uh, user preferences look there's an ad there um, if i went up here there's an ad here uh, and so there's always going to be some type of additional marketing to try to sell you on things when you've already purchased the product and i feel that is a huge thing that just really annoys me that shouldn't be in a program that I paid for at least not to this level and then another thing that I noticed with Cyberlink Power Director is the overall performance it is just not great you know um, especially if you're doing more complex projects there always seems to be stutters or issues with that and sometimes it'll crash more often than not and also there's other quirks like for example if I were to watch at the end of this so I watch at the end of this, this clip, and then it'll automatically go back to the beginning. That is very annoying. Um, now there could be ways that you could change this, but I'm just thinking about a default user experience and also doing things like if you wanted to delete this and you have multiple clips, now you have to choose the way you want to delete it, okay? So it's things like that uh, that hurt the overall usability. Uh, but I think in general, um, if somebody who's brand new to video editing, this is going to be easier overall to use uh, than Shotcut. However, as you're using this further and further, those little annoying quirks could definitely affect the overall workflow that you have and the time that you have to spend using this program. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy, the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. So the final main feature I'm comparing today is, well, features. So when it comes to features in Shotcut, there are a lot. There are a lot of filters available, uh, effects for video and audio. And there's just a lot of things available for somebody who's brand new video editing. And at the same time, there's other features here available. You could do effects. Um, there's color grading here and there's audio portion right here and all of these things just add a lot more features and depth to shotcut 
especially for a free and open source video editor that somebody who's brand new to video editing would really appreciate. And I really feel overall, this has a whole bunch of features that actually make sense and that they're easy to use overall. And so it has a lot of great features that's not gonna overwhelm you when it comes to using these features. Now, when it comes to features, this is where Cyberlink PowerDirector shines because they give you a ton of features. You have a whole bunch of pre-built effects and with each one of these effects, you actually have previews so you can visually see how things might look like before you apply them. And this is in contrast to Shotcut, which doesn't have that. And then many other features that PowerDirector provides. It provides um, animated graphics, these particle effects, a whole bunch of title templates and a lot of great transitions which you'll definitely use and also if you wanted to do audio mixing you could do audio mixing plus you could do voiceovers within this program uh, there's also a chapters option where you could organize things and then finally uh, you could also do subtitles as well and all of this is available by default in the program and if you actually wanted to download more uh, templates as they become available, you could do that. There's free templates or you could also purchase premium templates. And then there's other features within this program that will allow you to produce more mid to pro level video projects. And so many of these features, they're just simply not available in Shotcut, even though Shotcut does have a lot of great features. Uh, this is where I think CyberLink PowerDirector, that's probably the most valuable thing that it provides is the sheer amount of features that is offered. Now that we compare the top three features categories of Shotcut versus CyberLink PowerDirector, which one overall would I say is the best video editor? Now this one is a really tough one because I absolutely love using Shotcut and the fact that it is free just makes it that much better. But if I had to think objectively from somebody who is wanting to get into video editing and really wants their videos to look good and have a lot of features, then in this case, Cyberlink PowerDirector is gonna be the better option here because there's simply so many things that this video editor provides. And at the same time, if you are gonna be doing video editing more you know, more serious or more in depth and eventually you want to do this as a career, then more than likely this is going to give you a lot better training overall, a lot more experience. So whenever you do move over to more pro level video editors like Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, Apple Final Cut Pro and so forth, um, you're going to get a lot better usage out of those programs because you have used something like PowerDirector, which just simply offers more and it offers a environment that is very similar to using those pro level video editors. Whereas with Shotcut, I really feel that this will work for the majority of people out there. But if you actually wanted more features, uh, you wanted to learn more in depth video editing and just have access uh, to more things, then you're gonna have to move over to a different tool. And obviously Cyberlink PowerDirector does have its problems. I don't like the overall performance and the marketing that it has, but to be objective, it just simply offers a lot more for people who are beginning and later on who want to do more serious video editing. So that's my overall comparison of Shotcut versus PowerDirector. And at least in my opinion, I mean, with either one you go, you're gonna get a lot out of it. And if you're somebody who's on a budget, you can't go wrong with Shotcut because you don't have to pay anything. And then with Cyberlink PowerDirector, it just gives you a lot of features and allows you to make really great looking to pro level videos without a lot of effort. And so if you actually had any thoughts in this, whether you agree or disagree, or maybe you had some other thoughts in this or any other video editors that you've used, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see my video editing tutorials for either Shotcut or Cyberlink PowerDirector, I do have those, I'll leave that in the description area below. And if you are somebody who is a creative geek like me, and you wanted to see more content that I don't put out here publicly on YouTube, well, I do have a creative geek group where you get access to that. 
And the great thing is all of this is free. So if that's something that you are interested in. I will leave that in the description area below as well. So that is it for this episode. If you did get value out of this, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.